Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're just going to give it a couple more minutes, let people file in, and then we will get started. Thank you for joining us. For those that are that have just joined, we are just going to give it a couple more minutes, maybe one more minute, and uh, then we'll get started. So just waiting on, I uh, want to give time for everyone to show up. All right, well, <clears throat> it is 7.03, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, again, this is going to be recorded, so if anybody misses it, we will send it out. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for joining the Money Matters uh, Study Abroad Fair webinar. Um, my name is Ben Kinman. I'm the Student Finance Supervisor at uh, UCEAP. And my name is Elizabeth Holtz. I am the Scholarship and Alumni Engagement Coordinator at UCAP. And today we're going to talk about <clears throat> we're going to talk about a few things. So, the beginning of the presentation is going to be a, I'm going to present about um, just go over the general, you know, information about financial aid, how it works, uh, what types of aid you can get at UCAP, uh, and then I'll go over program costs, how you can determine costs, and some. Uh, other various information that is important uh, to know about the cost of EAP programs. And then I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth, who will be uh, going over the uh, scholarship side of things, and she will be uh, 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 giving us some more information about UC EAP scholarships and, and, and scholarships in general at EAP. So, all right, well, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, whenever you're ready, Elizabeth. Great. And just for everyone's awareness, uh, this presentation is being recorded and uh, will be available on the UCAP YouTube page. And captions are enabled as well if you would like to enable those. Oh, and thank you. Thank you for that, mm -hmm. Elizabeth. And one other thing. Sorry, guys, I forgot to mention. So uh, anybody that has questions, we should have time at the end for questions for a little bit of questions. You can enter them into the Q&A. Um, I don't believe the chat's enabled, so you can't contact us via chat. But if you do pop it into the Q&A, We'll be able to answer those at the end of the presentation. Um, there is, and one other little housekeeping thing, there is a presentation immediately after this. So we're hoping to get off at least five minutes before the hour, um, just, just so we can all be aware of what where we're at on the timeline. Okay, let's get going. All right, so, um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about financial aid and program costs. And you go to the next one, Elizabeth. So can I receive financial aid for study abroad at UCAP? Uh, yes, absolutely you can. So most of the aid that you receive at your home campus currently will be or is available while you're abroad at UCAP. This is because you remain a University of California uh, student. So you're not, you're not 
uh, you're not disenrolling from your campus and then studying abroad. You're staying at your you're staying a student at your home UC campus, um, and you're just going through the UC system wide program VAP. So all of the the financial aid that you normally receive is available. These are just some. Um, this isn't meant to be an exhaustive list of everything that's out there. This is just an I just to give you an idea that everything you normally can get from the FAFSA, from outside agency grants such as the Cal Grant. Um, Stanford tuition grant, other other outside agency grants, those those still can apply. Um, for veteran veteran benefits, the Cal for the CalVet students out there, we do accept CalVet waivers at UCEAP. So, um, any of you that have uh, CalVet, um, uh, you can just submit your uh, your the award letter to us, and then we'll apply it to your account. Um, there is one important note I have to make. So. And this is the reason we say almost almost all financial aid. So the VA uh, GI Bill chapter benefits are currently not allowed for use at UCEAP. So this is one funding source. If you are a veteran, um, unfortunately, you cannot use your benefits at UCEAP. So, um, and then of course there's other sources like 529s. If you have a 529, those those are accepted uh, at UCEAP, and as well as scholarships and other other uh, outside sources. So um, this is all just to say, basically almost all financial aid you get currently can still be available uh, at UCAP. All right. Okay, so how does financial aid work at UCAP? So basically you're gonna do everything you normally do at your home campus. So you're gonna fill out your FAFSA whenever it comes out. You're gonna do your California Dream Act. Um, and you want to make sure those are done for your term abroad. Um, then what's going to happen is we, uh, the, my office um, creates your program budget. So we create how much it's going to cost for you to go abroad with us. And we send that to the financial aid office and they will use that to uh, create your financial aid package. Um, so once your financial aid packages your aid for your term abroad, they will uh, they will update your campus account and then they will they will send us the financial aid uh, uh, to so that we can apply it to your UCEAP portal account. Um, it's important to know that if you do see financial aid on your home campus account for your term abroad, it it doesn't it doesn't mean that we're not going to get it. That's just some campuses will apply it to the account, reverse it out and then send it to us. Um, so just know that everything on the back end happens automatically. There's nothing you need to do to make them send aid to us. You just need to be uh, accepted into one of our programs. So um, yeah, so next slide. So uh, some other things that you need to consider if you're a financial aid student, especially if you're a full financial aid student um, and you normally get financial aid back to help you pay for your personal expenses is that some of these expenses for your term abroad are going to have to be paid before your financial aid disperses. So we call these pre-departure expenses, and these are typically visa fees, passports, um, immunizations, or any other health clearances that you have to get. Also, your airfare sometimes most likely is going to need to be paid before your financial aid disperses. So you need to make sure you have a plan in place to cover these expenses um, before your financial aid disperses. And then once it does disperse, you can pay yourself back or refund uh, however the money, however it was paid for. So, um, and when we're thinking of financial aid disbursements, so we try to, we want to get this money to the, to you as soon as possible, but there are federal rules on how early we can disperse the funds to you. So, the earliest that we can provide you your financial aid disbursement is 10 days prior to your program start date. So if everything goes well, your financial aid office sends us your aid, we get it applied to your account, and then we do a check and 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 for each program start date, and we're we're always looking to see when the disbursement date is, and we're dispersing aid as soon as we get it and as soon as we can. Um and yeah, so the, in this last point, this is just a note so, so, so you know that your aid is going to be applied to the program fees first. So aid goes to pay for fees first, 
any any aid in a, in excess of fees will be refunded to you. So, and and that that can be refunded to you via direct deposit or paper check. So the default methods paper check. I encourage everyone to to enroll in e refund um, when they're accepted into their UCAP program, so they can get it via direct deposit, much faster way. All right, next slide. Okay, another question you might have is. <clears throat> can I receive financial aid during the summer? Um, yes, absolutely. You can receive financial aid. Uh, are there are there issues with that? Well, there's not really issues, but there are differences in the amounts and the types of aid you receive for summer. So it's it's not as the the options are are a little bit smaller than what they are during the regular academic year. Um, however, each campus has a little bit different way that they do their own summer aid. So I can't really give you guys a general idea of how it works. I can just tell you that, yes, you can get aid. Um, and if you're concerned about aid for your summer, I definitely recommend uh, that you set up a meeting with your financial aid office to uh, talk about your, your potential summer aid package. Um, all right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, where can I find program costs? So we went over financial aid, just the basics. So that you can get financial aid. Uh, we talked about how it works. It applies to your UCAP portal account. You know you can get aid. So now we want to talk about how much, now you want to know, well, how much does the program cost? Or you might want to know how much aid am I going to get back to help me pay for my personal expenses? So if you want to figure that out, you can go to our website and each program has a cost page. On the cost page, you'll see something like this. We call it the cost calculator. And it's gonna ask you a set of five questions there at the top to sort of individualize the cost to your specific uh, scenario. So I've just highlighted a few things here that are important to keep in mind. And, 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 and I wanted to clarify because it might not be completely clear. So <clears throat> when you go to a cost page and you're filling out the cost calculator, it's gonna ask you what your campus you're from this determines the campus fees. So each campus has a different amount of campus fees that they assess that we charge on behalf of the campus. Um, it's going to ask for your cohort. So what this is asking for is what academic year did you first enroll at UC? So you may be aware of, of uh, cohort tuition or, um, you know, your tuition rate is set, is locked in, but it's, it depends on when you first enrolled. So what that is asking for is when you first enrolled, and so that's going to determine the amount of tuition that you pay at UCEAP. Uh, are you a California resident? So this is important to know for you non-residents non out there. So we are required to continue to assess non-resident supplemental tuition while you're on a UCEAP program. Um, however, you should know that summer uh, does not receive uh, non-resident supplemental tuition. So if you did, if you go on a summer program, we don't charge uh, non-resident supplemental tuition. Um, and then it's going to ask if you're a grad student, and then it's going to say, choose your package. And so this is basically the options, right? So this would be fall, spring, or year, or some could be summer as well. So at Yonsei University, there's this fall, a spring, a year, and a summer package. This one's just showing the fall package. And then it's going to give you an estimate. And then there's two there's two sections to the estimate. The top estimate is the uh, the fees that we'll assess on your portal account, right? And so when you get your financial aid, it's going to go to apply to those fees first. And anything anything in excess of that nine thousand five hundred and seventy six will be dispersed back to you. So that's a way you can figure out. Okay, I know I'm going to get twelve thousand in financial aid. Nine thousand five seventy six is going to be taken out of that. And then I'll get about two thousand plus back to pay for personal expenses. Um, a couple other things down at the bottom. That's the amount provided to financial aid for packaging. So the total cost of attendance. That's what we send to the financial aid office for packaging. And um, and and a little this little note there at the bottom that a lot of people might miss is it's going to be a link to your specific campus financial aid contact. So depending on what campus you input at the top. It's going to it's going to uh, output uh, your specific campus financial aid contact there on that link. So um, once you get this, you can you can contact your financial aid advisor, you know, tell them how much it's going to cost and then they can help get you a financial aid estimate. Um, 
Okay, so that was a little bit about financial aid and program costs, and now I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth to talk to you guys about scholarships. Great. Thank you so much, Ben. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and talk about UCAP scholarships now. Um, and as Ben mentioned earlier, there is another presentation that will be starting at 6 p.m. sharp. So um, I'm going to run through this presentation or this part of the presentation fairly quickly. Uh, but again, it is being recorded and it will be available on our UCAP YouTube page. So if you have missed any or have additional questions, please do not worry. Um, so starting off with what UCAP scholarships are available. So here is just an overview of our UCAP system-wide por scholarship portfolio. Um, we have our UCAP Google Scholarship, and you, uh, we also have named awards, and we'll talk about the difference between these in, a, in some additional slides, but essentially you apply for a global scholarship to be considered for named awards. Then we have additional scholarships that are listed on this slide that require separate applications. We also have year-long scholarship awards and then awards for after you return from studying abroad. So how do I apply for UCAP scholarships? So the main UCAP scholarship that you're going to want to apply for is the UCAP Global Scholarship. And that is a $2,000 scholarship for quarter semester or year long programs and $1,000 scholarship for summer programs abroad. You can access the UCAP scholarship application portal through the link on our UCAP website. It's also listed on this slide if you want to take a screenshot. Um, but again, on the UCAP website under the scholarships tab, uh, we have links that will redirect you to the application portal. Our application requires that you create an account and indicate your interest in UCAP scholarships, a form with some basic information, and some responses to statement of purpose type questions. Um, an important note here is that the UCAP scholarship account is different from the account you use to apply for a UCAP program. So you will need to create an additional account on the UCAP scholarship application portal that will be entirely separate from your UCAP program application. So as I mentioned, if you apply for a UCAP Global Scholarship, you are also eligible to be considered for what we call named awards. And these are awards that are specifically funded by a donor. And so they have specific criteria um, for in order to receive the award. So for example, one of the awards listed here is the Olivia Chan Ship Scholarship. That is a $2,500 scholarship offered in the fall and spring, and it's for a student studying in Italy and meets the ideals set by Olivia Chan Ship, who the scholarship is named after. Um, and this award is actually determined by the donor of the scholarship. So they get the applications and then ultimately make that decision. Um, like I said, if you submit an application for the UCAP Global Scholarship, your application will automatically be forwarded in internally, so in the scholarship system, based on the award qualifications, meaning that if you are eligible based on these qualifications, your application will be considered for the award. So again, by applying for the UCAP Global Scholarship, you are also considered for several other additional awards, which is why that we recommend everyone applies for the UCAP Global Scholarship. So what are some of the other scholarships that UCAP offers? So we have on this slide the additional scholarships that we offer. And you'll notice on this slide, you'll see requires an additional application because these applications are all apply to applications, meaning that you submit an additional application uh, in addition to the UCAP Global Scholarship. So for example, we have the Social Media Scholarship, which is offered in the summer, fall, and spring. So for individuals who consider themselves skilled in uh, social media and content creation, this is a great scholarship to apply for, and it involves some of the same kind of basic forms, but then also has um, the application is tailored to giving examples of your content creation or um, portfolio and that kind of things. I wanna highlight here too, we also have year long scholarships that also require an additional application. Um, and these are some of our biggest awards. And um, the reason why you'll see next to them uh, kind of details like 30 or more awards is because not many individuals study on year long programs. Um, and we have quite a bit of funding for year long programs. So uh, for year long scholarships, there's about a one in three chance of obtaining a scholarship if you are participating in a year long program and you apply for a UCAP year long scholarship. Um, so again, that is some great options for funding. And if you have the ability to participate in a year long UCAP scholarship, we highly recommend it. So now we have what eligibility requirements are necessary for UCAP scholarships. 
So all UCAP students are eligible to apply for UCAP scholarships. UCAP does not have citizenship, residency, or other eligibility requirements. If you are a UC student who applies and is ultimately selected for a UCAP program, you are eligible for a UCAP scholarship. So again, we encourage everyone to apply for at the minimum a UCAP global scholarship because if you are participating in an outbound UCAP program as a UC student, you are eligible. Now we have what are the application deadlines for UCAP scholarships. So these are our general application deadlines. If you are submitting a fall or year long application, those typically open on January 15th and close on March 15th. Um, below there, you'll see if you're uh, applying for a spring program. So uh, a submitting, excuse me, a UCAP scholarship application for a spring program, that application will open August 15th and close September 15th. Um, and then summer is listed below there with application opening January 15th and closing February 15th. The important thing to note with these deadlines is that they are all very firm deadlines. So applications must be submitted on those dates by 11.59 p.m. Unfortunately, we cannot make any exceptions to those deadlines. So again, please be sure if you're interested in applying for UCAP scholarships that you review the application deadlines and make sure to submit by 11.59 p.m. Um, on the date that the application closes. As with anything, there are often technology shifts and things. So please make sure that you are looking at those application deadlines ahead of time and try to work on your scholarship application ahead of time. Now we're moving on to what requirements are there for accepting a UCAP scholarship. So there are some pre and post program requirements. So before the program, you if you are lucky, if you are chosen as a recipient of a UCAP scholarship before your program, a thank you letter will be due to the donor upon your acceptance of the award. So the donor who funds that scholarship, as well as a professional or portrait photo of yourself, just so that donors can put a name to the individual or I mean a face, excuse me, to the individual that they have chosen to give a scholarship to. After your program concludes, you uh, will be asked to complete a two-page report on your time abroad and include a minimum of three photos showing your experience. Uh, and uh, on note on the photos, um, so all the photos you have seen so far that I've presented as a part of the UCAP scholarship info are um, some of the photos submitted by past scholarship recipients. So you can get an idea of what those photos look like. So now what are some application tips for students interested in applying for UCAP scholarships? So first and foremost, uh, we have the application tip of making your personal statement memorable. We receive hundreds uh, of UC UCEAP applications every term. And so we really are looking for individuals to be specific about their background and their reasons for going abroad. Uh, we are also looking for students who have found programs that match their academic and professional development. So show us how your program choice fits your goals. We understand that um, studying abroad is a great opportunity to travel the world. However, we encourage everyone to stay away from cliches about travel and other cultures, and also emphasize time spent in your host country versus the chance to travel on weekend to other countries. So again, we appreciate that, you know, the ability to travel around uh, when you're studying abroad is really a uh, positive that many students get to experience. But in terms of your scholarship application, we really wanna know why did you choose your program? What are you looking forward to in your on your program? What are you looking forward to about your host country? Um, and keep your essay or keep your responses, excuse me, focused with concise and clear writing, proper grammar and accurate spelling. Um, have someone review your essay responses as well. And I say essay responses um, because Ultimately, uh, the questions are formulated to kind of form uh, an overarching statement of your interest in studying abroad. Um, however, they are broken down into um, short kind of paragraph questions. And then we have what are the post-program award options? So I mentioned this at the beginning of the presentation. So we offer UCAP internship awards, which are $750 awards. And this is, uh, recognizes students who have distinguished themselves while acquiring career training and workplace skills on a study abroad program. Awards are offered semi-annually for internships in all disciplines. 
And then we also offer undergraduate research awards, which those are valued between $1,000 to $1,500. And those recognize undergraduate students who have conducted exceptional research while studying abroad. Awards are also offered annually for research, research projects in all disciplines. Um, so if you would like to learn more about these post-program awards, again, they you apply for them after you return from your UCAP study abroad program. Uh, but there is a link on this slide that you can again uh, take a screenshot or go to, you will also find it on the UCAP website under the return and reflect tab. Uh, information will be listed about these and there's a contact as well as if you have specific questions. Okay, so uh, we are nearing the end of our presentation. And so on this slide, we have some U, some UCAP resources that uh, we think could be helpful. So during International Education Week in November, we will be offering drop-in advising sessions, application workshops, student returnee panels, and some program info sessions. Registration information is available on the UCAP website along with the link that's listed on this screen. Uh, you are also welcome to visit the UCAP YouTube channel to access our catalog of helpful videos. So like I said, we have previous, this video will be there, but we also have previous study broad fairs. In terms of scholarships, we also have, we offer UCAP scholarship webinars every academic term. So where we do a little bit more of a deep dive in terms of scholarships and uh, availability of scholarships requirements and things like that. We also are offering um, an Exploring Your Identity Abroad series with webinars throughout the year in collaboration with the UC Campus Study Abroad offices. So the link is below for that as well. And lastly, here um, is a link to access contact information for UCAP program teams and Campus Study Abroad offices when you have questions. Um, and as you can see on the screen, there's also a QR code if you would like to register directly um, for International Education Week on the UCAP website. So next steps, and this is going to be our final slide of today, is um, to, we, to explore the UCAP website. We hope this presentation has provided you with some helpful information on your study abroad journey uh, and encourage you to explore the website for detailed information about UCAP, the programs, scholarships. All the scholarships I have mentioned today um, are listed on our website and there's more details because again, this was kind of a short time slot. We wanna make sure to get to your questions that um, are in the uh, question and answers. But um, so there's definitely more information on our website that you can review as well as some of the additional resources that I talked about on the last slide. Uh, we encourage you to visit your campus study abroad office, their website as well, or the how to apply section on any program page on the UC EAP website for information on application steps and deadlines. Contact information for campus offices is also available through the QR code on this slide. Um, we also offer office hours where you can schedule an appointment to have a video call with the UCAP advisor to talk more about our programs in more detail. You will uh, find the link to make an offer, or excuse me, to make an office hours appointment through the QR code as well. And once you have determined which program you would like to apply to, you can start an application by selecting the Apply Now button on the UCAP website. Um, feel free to contact us if you have questions. The general email for UCAP is on this slide under the QR code. Um, and with that, I think we will move on to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, please send us any questions you have right now uh, in the Q&A and um, I will go ahead and re-show my video here. All righty, mm -hmm. Ben, you there? Oh, great. Yeah, so we've got one uh, attendee with the hand up. I don't know if if okay, and we're work. actually, I believe we stop recording at this point. Um, okay. Uh, for just so that this is what's going to go on the YouTube, but we are going to stick around um, for questions and answers. So uh, please don't go away if you have questions. We're just going to stop the recording.